It's so beautiful because every time everything you say is yes. <laughs> so easy to different. And uh, more and more I find it very easy to uh, find the emptiness, the nothingness. I really can see that's me. And when I'm there, it's nothing. I mean, it's no feelings, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I want to ask you about that because in one way it's peace, it's just peace. But it's some kind of question about love because in, in a way it feels like it's because it's nothing. <laughs> Something in me, yeah. It's it's where is the love? <laughs> where is the love? But I also, in one way, I feel it like I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. You say, when I'm in the emptiness, there's great peace and great silence and great sense of resting. But where is the love? Where is the love? The love isn't there somehow. Just the peace and the silence and the resting. And I've got love on the checklist as well. And I can't <laughs> tick that box just yet. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe it's a different kind of love. Maybe it's a different kind of love. Maybe it's a love that just the, the truest love I, I feel simply is. Because that embraces and allows everything to be as it is. Is there any greater love than that? Now for another being, their flavour that comes out of the realisation of the self may be a kind of very demonstrative love. You know, we've all seen Amma, haven't we? Amma in India. Amma. It's travelling, hugging, you know, hugging, hugging, like that. <laughs> hugging, 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 hugging. I was on tour with her. I went on tour with her many years ago in India. And we arrived in this place and uh, I just looked out and all I could see, for as far as I could see, were just thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And I thought, she is going to hug and feed every one of them. She's going to hug and feed every one of them. I was thinking, wow, I wonder how many it's going to take. There's a lot of people out there. And this is in India. And in India, the hug, in, in London, you get about a three or a five second hug. Because there's <laughs> maybe 500 people there. So you get a really nice hug. But in India, she is doing about five in a second. She's chomp, chomp, chomp. <laughs> She's doing it. Like this, like this, and every time someone moves out, someone else moves in, and I just thought, wow, this, this woman is incredible. She really is the, the, the hugging saint. <laughs> she really is uh, the um, embodiment of love. Her, her embodiment 
is sharing that way in a very demonstrative, feed the people, love the people way. In another realized view, let us just take Ramana, just give that example. Ramana, I don't think he was hugging a lot of people. I don't think people were queuing up for hugs. They say, they'd say that they just used to like, you know, he'd be sitting in the hall, just kind of looking out in the distance, just really still. And just hundreds of people would just come and sit there. Is that a, a different love to Amma's love? Maybe, maybe its flavour is different, but where it is coming from is same. Is same. I say your flavour, your embodiment, let it be the way it is. And the more you're able to come inside that, and the less there is somebody there, you know, trying to push anything, you'll just feel like, no, this is my, this is my flavour. That This is the flavour of this flower. Another flower smells like that. Another flower smells like that. But this flavour, your flavour, maybe is pure silence. Pure silence. Maybe that is, is the flavour that comes through that embodiment. And you're asked just to, just to allow that to come through. Just that pure silence. That in, in and of itself is love. And the less the person is there, the less the person is there, there is more space for kind of God to just work through you. It's like they, 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 sometimes they make a prayer, isn't it? Just, you know, let me be an embodiment for God. Like whatever God wants of me, let me just be that. Let me be in full service to that. And, you know, myself also, you know, I remember when I was spending a lot of time with Muji, and Muji's temperament also is kind of very loving. It's got a very loving way. And also myself, I was feeling, I, I don't really feel that. I feel more silence. Inside that silence, I feel a love, but it is not demonstrative. And I can't force myself to be like that. I just kind of accept that this is the way that this embodiment is. And I do love people. I do love people. But I don't feel... If, if I were to go out hugging people all day, I would be totally overwhelmed. I would be totally overwhelmed. I would probably last three days and then I'd have to just tell everyone that I, I've given up my job as the hugging saint. I gave it a go. And it wasn't for me. But if, if I had to sit in silence every day, I could do that. It doesn't take anything from me. If, if you said to me, Paul, can we just, like, for a year, just, can we just meet every morning for an hour and just sit in silence? I'd say, of course. <laughs> but if you say, Paul, can we meet every day for an hour and just hug? I'd say, I have to think about it. <laughs> I could try it for a week, but I can't make any guarantees. <laughs> I also feel that it's a, it's a very bonded child in here. Yeah. And a closed heart in that. And, yeah. And what I feel is when I know when I know the emptiness, when I know that, and when when I can be in it, it feels like maybe this wounded part. And there to come up. Yeah. So, so maybe that's also what, what I'm, uh, I feel this closed heart, maybe. Also. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, now that is a slightly different thing. That is a slightly different thing. Now there is a sense of closed heart and, and vulnerable child. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So both of those things, they need to be met by you mm. as as love, mm. as presence. So that so that those parts of yourself, they are just naturally met. Mm. How to meet them? Just be still. Just be still. And the consciousness in you, it will naturally go towards whatever feels um, incomplete or something. It will, it will naturally go towards that. But at the same point, you yourself, you are aware of the consciousness moving to these parts, and you yourself know yourself as the unmoving. Because I wouldn't want to say that allow consciousness to go to all these parts and when all these parts are fully healed and fully at peace and fully okay, then you're there. I wouldn't want to say that. Because then it sets up a, a trap. Mm -hmm. And the mind will come into that and say, okay, now we're going to make sure that she never gets there. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. You know you're there, you know you're that. So within that knowing now, there is just the willingness and the openness to fully meet the child, to fully meet the child and to fully open to the closed heart and to feel maybe the pain that is there, and maybe the contraction that is there, and maybe the, the hurt and disappointment that is there. And to have the willingness and authenticity to not hide behind any spiritual realization, but to fully open to your humanness and fully embrace your humanness. And this is a really beautiful aspect of this path. It's a beautiful aspect of this path that the light of consciousness begins to kind of meet, <coughs> meet and embrace all these other aspects of ourselves. At the same point now, I want to say that even while there is life in this body, that even for an awake being, on the surface, on the surface, there may still be a kind of play, a play. Something may at times feel a little bit wavy. In fact, that is why this example of the ocean and the wave has been used so often is because it's such a good one. That on the surface, the wave is always wavy. The depth of the ocean is always still. Both are water. They are all water and they're not separate. Yet the, 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 the nature of one is to be like that and the nature of the other is to be still. I am encouraging you to come into your stillness and then see if that stillness permeates the rest of you without needing the wave to ever, to ever not be wave-like. You know, the, the depth of the ocean isn't looking up at the wave saying, you know, why are you so wavy today? <laughs> You know, can't you just settle it down a bit? Yeah. No, it's just that that is part of the expression. And in ourself, there is also part of that expression. But I say, don't identify with it. Because if you only identify with the wave, then you're going to feel, oh, oh, you know, life is so, you know, I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. You know yourself as the depth, then even if something is a bit rocky upstairs, you are, you are home still. You are home. And that is what I'm encouraging you, you for. This pain that you feel, let's see, this pain that, that is in the heart, are you feeling that now as we are here? Yeah. Yeah. She said, not so much, but she can feel it, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so you can feel that. And as you fully feel that without becoming that, then something in that, in its own time, is going to just release. And maybe then also you will feel much more this sense of love inside you. But don't create that as the end journey. Just, just see that you have already arrived and now a kind of deepening process is taking place against a background of something which is not deepening. It simply is. Then your life, and I feel this very strongly in you, your life again will be for God's life. God's life. I feel this strongly in many people in here. Many people. Their life is for God. Their destiny is only going to be fulfilled on that level. It can't be fulfilled elsewhere. It's just like it's your time. It's your time. And even if the world doesn't understand you, even if nobody understands you, and still you, you just know that in your heart it's your time. That this life is for truth. And that, that you give yourself to that fully. <clears throat>